Hello everyone and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how do you deal with two different date fields in your data set. For example, in my data set that I have over here, I have order date and I have ship date and I want to calculate the unit sold by order date and by ship date. Let's say for example, I want to know in the year 2020 and quarter one, I want to know how many units were ordered and how many units were shipped in the same time period. Now I have created a chart over here. Since I have two different date fields, I've created a table over here with order date and I have another table over here, which is created by ship date, wherein my unit sold column remains the same in both of these tables. Now, if I want to know the unit sold in the year 2020 quarter one, then I need to go over here. If I choose 2020 quarter one, then I will get the unit sold, which is 16 million. However, the ship date table is being filtered for that corresponding period, which is 2021 quarter one and 2021 quarter two. Whereas I was actually intending to look at 2020 quarter one. And to do that, I will have to go into my ship date 2020 and select quarter one to look at the exact units that were shipped in that particular period. Now, since we are dealing with two different date columns, it becomes quite challenging to create or uh, bring in both of these fields into one visual. So let's understand how we can do this in Power BI. So let's get started with this tutorial. So first of all, I will be needing a calendar table to be added into my data model. So what I will do is I will head to my channel MI Tutorials and go to the search tab over here and type in calendar. So you will come across this particular video over here. You can click on this particular hey guys, video. Man. And when you scroll down to the description section, you have a little piece of code over here. If you want to know in detail how to create this particular calendar table, you can watch this video. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to copy this particular code. Head to my Power BI and then go to Modeling tab, click on New Table. I'm going to paste this particular code over here and press Enter. And now we have a new calendar table created. And now when you look at the calendar table over here, I have hard coded the date values over here. So let me show you the table. So if I come to date over here, it is starting all the way from 1st Jan of 2016 and all the way up to 26 9 of 2018. So if you look at the order date table over here, it is starting all the way from 1st January 2019 and goes up to 7th January 2021. And when we look at the ship date, this is starting from 1st January and it is going all the way up to 2022. So when we are calculating our calendar table, we will have to consider both the fields over here, which is order date and ship date so that it considers all the dates which are there in that particular column. So let's go back to our calendar table over here and make some changes so that this accommodates both the order date and the ship date. So I'm going to define a variable over here. I'm going to call this as min date. So I'm going to type in minimum open bracket and then I'm going to type minimum again and then say order date close the bracket comma and then type in min again and here I'm going to type in ship date so that it's going to consider the minimum date from both of these fields and then I'm going to copy the entire line of code over here go to the next line paste this and change this to max and change the min to max over here so that it we now have the maximum date as well from both of these fields and now on the next line over here where I have the calendar table, I'm going to remove this section of the code and type in minimum date. This is the variable that we've created over here, followed by comma and then max date. So this is going to take all the dates starting from min date to max date and then press enter. And now when we go back to our calendar table, you will notice that our dates begin from 1 1 2019 and go up till the end of 26 9 2021 and now let's go to our model view and create a relationship between the order date and the date column over here now that we've created a relationship now let's head back over here and let's go to a new page and add in the date from the calendar table i'm going to remove the hierarchy over here and just keep in the year and quarter and then I'm going to create a new measure over here. And then I'm going to call this measure as ordered units sold is equals to calculate sum of units sold. Then I'm going to close the bracket over here. I'm going to bring in the measure that we just created into this particular table. 
And now let's go back to our model view because we will have to also get the units sold by ship date. So what I will do is I will create a relationship with the ship date and the date column from the calendar table. So let me drag this particular field onto the date column over here. And now you will notice that we've created an inactive relationship which is notified by this dotted line over here. And now let's see how we can bring in the unit sold by ship date into this particular visual. So what I will now do is I'm going to create a new measure. This is where all the magic happens. So now I'm going to say shipped units sold underscore sold is equals to calculate sum of units sold close the bracket comma and now I'm going to say use relationship open bracket and then I'm going to type in ship date comma and then I'm going to say calendar date. This is the relationship, the inactive relationship that we have. Now we can calculate the unit sold by creating a relationship or by using the relationship which we have between these two tables and now I'm going to press enter. Let me just correct the spelling here, ship the unit sold and now when I bring in the ship unit sold into my table over here, you will notice that we now have the shipped unit sold as well but it is blank for the year 2019. So let's go back to our excel sheet to analyze this. So now let me filter for the year 2019 over here on the order date column and when we look at the ship date we do not have the year 2019 at all. So that is why you see the blank values on Power BI. And now let me just quickly filter for the year 2020, click on OK and you will notice that our total unit sold is 55 million for the year 2020 under order date. Now let me quickly go back into my ship date and select 2020 and now let's look at the total unit sold. This is 39 million. So when I come back to Power BI, I have just get, gotten rid of the quarter that I had over here just to look at the totals over here by, the, by year. So the unit sold for the year 2020 is 55 million and the shipped units for the year 2020 is 39 million. This is exactly what we saw in the Excel sheet and we've just created that using the feature use relationship within Power BI. So that's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. You've learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.